one big concern is our lack of snowfall. As we know, New York City has only seen 0.4 inches of snow for the entire year. The entire metro area saw either an inch exactly, if you we were lucky, or in most cases, less than an inch. But I want to draw you to a bigger problem than just our lack of snow. Look at how dry the grass is. There has been a severe rainfall deficit. So far, Central Park has measured just 0.04 inches of liquid precipitation, which has stayed generally constant throughout the metro area. Obviously, the snow showers that we got on February 1st dumped meager, but still some amount of precipitation. After that, we had one tiny little sprinkle throughout the metro area. That was it. February still needs to see 0.43 inches in order to not be the driest on record. Um, in, um, in December, precipitation varied heavily with many areas seeing well above our precipitation like New York City, which saw nearly six inches. And then you had some places on Long Island that had less than two inches well below average. Um, January was more even with the amount about four inches, so slightly above average for all. But February so far has been exceptionally dry, and January needs to be one of the wettest on records to compensate for a dry February. There looks to be some rain in the forecast, but it's not significant. We could ultimately have a summer-like setup. And in this video, what I want to talk to you about is how specifically drought conditions even emerged in the first place. So, what you got to understand is that 2022 never had that much of a precipitation surplus to begin with. It was slight because you had a, um, you know, you had a, you had a bit of a like near average January in terms of precipitation. February precip was a little bit below average and the same held true in March. And April and May were both slightly above average. The story begins in June. Central Park saw just about two and a half inches of rain, which is below average. Um, below average June precipitation, uh, June precipitation. But parts of Long Island are three and a half inches and were slightly above average for June precipitation. And it's all because of the scattered nature of storms and how some storms can just really, you know, drop an inch of rain in some areas while leaving others with very meager amounts of rain. That summer exacerbated in the summer. Everyone started July with one of their driest starts on record. But there were a ton of severe thunderstorms after it, but they had varying results. Like July 16th, dumped 1.1 inches of rain on Central Park. But look at Newark at 0.09 inches, or JFK at 0.02. Newark would finish with their driest July on record, while Central Park precipitation for July at 4.55 inches was 99% of normal. Long Island was also very dry. Wireless specifically saw just a half inch of rain, but it's also unofficial and we also have a bad rain gauge. I've, I've like questioned a lot of their measurements. But still though, that is depressing. That is depressing how we saw um, such conditions just so, he he so like variable uh, um, throughout all that. Then there was a July 18th storm, which dumped 1.85 inches of rain in the city and flooded Tarrytown with five inches of rain. But again, some areas just got very little rain and it all depended on exactly where you were. July 21st, largely missed New York City. And this is why the heat wave did not break after the storm. Um, rain was less than a quarter inch throughout most of the metro, but, when an, but then an inch of rain slammed the city on July 25th, which broke the heat wave in New York City. But what we got to understand is that, um, is that most of the metro area, again, continued to suffer through drought after this. We had four severe thunderstorms move through in the course of 10 days that dumped four inches of rain in, you know, in some parts of the city, 
And in reality, this, it, it gave some other places the short end of the stick. But August was dry pretty much everywhere you go. Even Central Park saw only two inches. And some parts of the metro area for, um, saw only two-thirds of an inch of rain, seeing one of their driest Augusts on record. What we also got to understand is the fact that August was nearly as hot as July. In Central Park, it was 79.5 in July, 79.3 in August, which led to a July that was, you know, in the top 20 for everyone, but not that impressive to um, a top four warmest August across the metro area. Some seeing their hottest on record. So how did this happen? How did this in particular happen? Um, well, it's because while well, July had that brutal heat wave um, from the 19th to the 24th, what we got to understand about the rest of the month is that it's pretty tame. Yes, it did hit 80 degrees every single day, but there were still some below average days sprinkled in there. And while they couldn't have been that below average, besides that heat wave, we never really saw any extreme readings. The highest that it got outside of this heat wave was just 91 degrees. And lows outside this heat wave really were in the low 70s, at um, maybe 73, 74 at highest. It really was this heat wave that made the month known for its uncomfort. The summer was actually known for being a relatively bearable one up until this point, with just a few hot and humid days scattered in there and it mostly being bearable. This is when the summer started to become miserable. August would exacerbate that trend. So it actually started off with a half inch of rain in the city um, on August 1st. That was the biggest rainstorm. And everything else was extremely scattered and hit or miss. The rain on August 1st did drag the high down to the 70s and the low down to the 60s for the first time in many weeks on both fronts. But immediately after a heat wave tried to form, August 2nd hit 90 degrees, August 3rd hit 89, August 4th was back in the 90s, August 5th was back to 89, but then August 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th all strung together very hot days. Lows got up to the upper 70s yet again. Then we saw two days, one with a high of 87, one with a high of 89, so even though the heat wave was over, it still didn't feel like it. Then we saw our fall preview, um, but even August 12th was still above average and still saw a low in the 70s. But we then saw a week of lows in the 60s. We also saw some rain on August um, 16th. That was nice to see. But on August 18th, even though we still say it's part of the fall preview, it was starting to get hot and humid again. It hit 87 on the 17th, low of 69 on the um, 18th, I mean on the 19th, then a high of 90. While there were no more official heat waves, highs were either in the low 90s or the upper 80s for the rest of the month, and lows were in the 70s until the last day of the month when they were back in the upper 60s. So, again, you know, we, we really are just starting to see this, um, this trend where August was very hot and it was deceptively so. But when, when all the days except for a select couple do make it into the 80s and you still see those 97 degree temperatures, Yes, it easily makes sense why August was so hot. But going into September, September was another time where the rain that was hit or miss was a problem. The city saw 0.78 inches of rain in a storm that was supposed to break the drought and deliver two to two and a half inches. Some areas saw major flooding problems in five inches of rain. Great for them. But the storm underestimated New York City where I live, saw just a half inch of rain. As a matter of fact, a lot of the rain in the month was just by chance. September 25th, strong storms that also produced a tornado in Suffolk County, dumped 1.44 inches in Newark, 1.11 in Central Park, 0.78 at LaGuardia, and 0.28 at Kennedy. Um, Long Island also did not see that much precipitation, but it happened to be even here, the biggest storm of the month. And it was just simply due to an isolated strong thunderstorm. The day itself was rather pleasant with a high of about 72 and a low of about 59. We were actually thinking that we could have had our last low in the 60s occur very early 
on um on like September 21st our last loan is 60s occur very early and while it seemed to hold out true a pattern change did occur in late October and we wound up seeing lows in the 60s as late as November 12th which is actually one of the latest dates to see um a low in the 60s Um, you know, one of the latest things to see a low in the 60s. But, as far as the, um, as far as the rain goes, now October was actually kind to us. Because it opened up with three inches of rain, thanks to Ian, and it was consistent. Drought was finally starting to get better, not in September as what we hoped. But in October, which was still better than never. But then it turned dry again. And it seemed like we were having the same problems with November, where again, we had rain, but not that much of it. December also had a scattered problem. I mean, parts of Long Island got like two inches of rain again, and parts of it got six. And in January, it was also scattered, although not as badly. My point is that February, we are really not in a position where we could handle our driest February in record. And we have to hope that doesn't happen. But, I mean, honestly, I'm worried about a lack of snow. But snow is something that we could live with. That'll be hard. But if we don't have any water at all, if we don't have any rain, there's going to be problems. Um, too much rain is a bad thing, but no rain is worse, especially agriculturally wise. Too much rain does lead to a lot of human fatalities, though. So, that's also a problem. Alright, so now. Now, now, now. Time for a little bit of how my life was going in February. It's mostly good. But there are quite a few things going on right now. That are, um, that, you know, that, that are kind of constraining everything. In particular, there's one person now who I... One of my teachers who I thought liked me, apparently she doesn't anymore. And, um, and I can't get into specifics because my last video I got into specifics, somebody threatened the FBI on me for some reason. So, I'm not going to get into any specifics, but it, it is just a general problem that uh, will, will at some point have to be addressed. But right now, I might be able to leave it.